Welcome or welcome back to my channel and today is a little bit of a different kind of a video. Today we're going to talk about what does human design have to tell us about war and violence. Here in the United States we have been witnessing some very tragic events lately where groups of people have been attacked by a single gunman in one situation, clearly a race motivated, almost like execution of this young man, 18 years old, not really old enough to know exactly what he's doing, I think, went and killed 10 people. You know, he traveled to an entirely different place where he could kill as many black people as he could get in his uh, line of fire. And then we just had another situation where 19 people were murdered by, again, a young man just turned 18. Doesn't look like it was mostly racially motivated. I don't know yet what might have been the motivation for that, but children, mostly children and two adults. So what is going on here, right? And what does human design have to say about that? If you've been following me for a while, you may have heard me talk about how the human design chart is a template for an evolving humanity. So what I mean by that is that what is included in the 64 gates, 36 channels, um, and nine centers, uh, along with the profiles and the types and all of, you know, all the different pieces of the system are helping us to understand what our evolutionary process is about. And war, like we're seeing in Ukraine right now, is not on the human design chart. Imperialism is not in the chart. Uh, multinational corporations that exploit people across the globe, not in the chart. There's a lot of things that are present in our world today that are not in the chart. It's very interesting. So what does that actually mean for us? Well, one piece of it is, is that when these things, the things that are occurring that are not in the chart, ideally are something that we are evolving beyond. That in our evolutionary process, which is what human design is providing for us, is our template both collectively in terms of what's in the whole chart and then individually as we each come to know our own definition and the soul curriculum is to be able to express the most awakened aspects of what our definition is and then also of the places where we're open but we work with our definition first and then we work with our openness when we see these things happening, like on the global scale with what's going on in Ukraine, with Russia and Ukraine, this is not part of our evolutionary process, right? It's something that we, many of us, I think we thought we had evolved beyond this kind of war and violence of what was going on. The only place that you find war uh, in the human design chart is in uh, the tribal circuit. And so this is a different kind than what we see of an imperialistic war, right? It's not an imperialistic war. It's much more a situation where you might think of raids, for example, or, um, you know, we're going to go and raid and get food because we don't have enough food. So we're going to go raid for food, right? And then it's in the defense circuit where this lies. It's in the channel of 59.6, which in traditional human design is known as the gate of, or the, or the channel of reproduction. And in quantum human design is the channel of provision. But colloquially, it's been known as the channel of mating and where love and war exist in the chart. I mean, well, love exists in a bunch of different places in the chart, but it's the one place where we say more lives in the chart. It doesn't live, interestingly enough, in either of the collective circuits, uh, either in the logic circuit or the sensing circuit, which are the big 
circuitry that have to do with, you know, nations and the nation state and infrastructure and global things, right? There's no war in that circuitry. So when we see war happening on that level, we know that it's not in alignment with our evolutionary journey. Now, what's happening with these murders that have been going on lately is a kind of tribal expression. That energy is really more about protecting your food, protecting your horses, protecting your children, right? It's that kind of energy. It's, it's, it's more of a protective energy than it is um, an aggressive energy or certainly an imperialistic energy. And there is a quality of tribalism that in both of these two ones that I know more about. So the one that happened in Buffalo and the one that just happened in Texas, where there was a sense of someone is going, we're going to go and kill people of that other tribe, right? You have a young man who's a white supremacist, who has learned whatever he's learned from his tribe. Um, I don't know anything about his family. I don't know anything about where he grew up. I don't I don't know any of that, the particulars, but clearly what we might think of as his tribe, and it might even be something that he knows mostly through the internet, is one that believes that African-American people are dangerous to his people, right? And so it's very tribal. So he's going to go and attack and kill as many of the people of the other tribe, even though they're completely anonymous to him. He knows nothing about them. He probably doesn't really know anything about African American people at all. You know, who knows if he's ever really even interacted with African American people, right? And it's much easier to go and kill people that you don't know. When you feel separate, and you feel aggressed upon yourself, which it sounds like he thought he did with this replacement theory, then it's much easier to go and kill things that you think are separate from you. Now, this is a deep thing that we've got going on in general on our planet right now, because we're doing the same thing to the earth, right? We think we're separate from the earth and it makes it easier for us to pollute the water, pollute the air, pollute the oceans, you know, cut down the forests, dam the rivers, all of that, right? To, you know, strip mine and frack and, all of these different things that we do to the planet, because we think of it as being separate from us, when in fact, it is not. We are nature, we are expressions of nature, we are connected to the planet. And as human beings, we're connected to all of the other human beings. But when we get trained that we are separate, and that we're on different sides, and we have this conflict, then we can go to war with each other in whatever way that we can. Now, the thing is, is that in tribal circuitry, there is this channel of love and war, channel of mating. And in quantum human design, as I said, it's a channel of provision, which means it's really, it's kind of the classical masculine archetype of providing for the family, um, providing resources, providing protection, and so on. That's, that's what that channel is about. It's also sexuality. So there's powerful sexual energy there, but it's also emotional. It's both emotional and it's connected to the emotional solar plexus. And it's also connected to the sacral. Both of them need time. The sacral is always responsive. It's responding. The emotional solar plexus needs time to get clear because emotional energy can take over and override your sacral, for example, if you're a generator uh, or a manifesting generator and you have a defined emotional solar plexus, you need to take time to see what your sacral is going to say while you're more up in your wave and when you're more low on your wave, right? And so you want to be able to get a consistent response. And then the sacral is always responsive. It's not initiatory. You don't initiate with the sacral. You respond to what shows up in your outer reality. So when we look at these situations, you know, these mass murders that have just gone on, it's like this energy gone awry. 
And in more indigenous cultures in the Americas, people that I have heard speak and read and so on, say that empowered masculinity that is not balanced with responsibility and accountability is very dangerous. And I think that this is actually what we've just seen. Because of how our gun laws are, you can have somebody who just turned 18 go and buy a gun and then shoot his grandmother and then go into a school and shoot 19 people. He clearly doesn't have responsibility or accountability in his whatever his tribe is. And again, this is not, I'm not blaming his family or anything. I'm just talking about the people that he's related to, the people who might otherwise teach accountability and responsibility. It didn't happen. Now, let me say that I think it doesn't happen most of the time. I don't think it's just with, you know, the person who kind of goes crazy and does something like this. There isn't a lot of responsibility and accountability that goes with power. And this is how we get toxic masculinity. And you can get women who have toxic masculinity too. Okay, let me just say that. We have some people in Congress right now, women who have toxic masculinity. So we want to look at what does human design tell us about what helps to balance this out? Well, on the other side of the defense circuit is the 5027, which is the kind of archetypal feminine energy, which is more nurturing. And the 27 is really that nurturing energy. And the 50 is all about values. It's about values. It's about how we know who we are as a people. It's about how we pass down to the next generation, next generations you know, our codes of conduct, uh, our codes of how we interact with each other. What is our personal responsibility that we have as we grow and mature and become adults? That's in the 50, right? And so when we don't have that 50 really active in a family or a community, then you can have this kind of toxic masculinity, which is empowered and you're 18 years old and you can go buy a gun and there's no accountability there. And they hadn't been taught responsibility yet. They hadn't learned responsibility yet. Or maybe their family or their community tried to instill that in them. And But so much of the world is saying something different that they didn't felt empowered to do something different. We have the opportunity to help grow into what the chart shows us is possible, which is that when we have this energy for love and war, and you know, you've probably heard something like this, right? Which is that we, we fight the most or we have as much most conflict with the people that we're closest to, right? Because it matters the most in some ways, right? So we, you know, we have this, this, the line between love and hate, right? And so that's kind of what's in that 59, uh, six. Um, and then you throw in sexual energy, you throw in emotional energy, you've got life force power in there, you've got a lot of power going on, right? It's a lot to manage. It's a lot to handle. And if it's not balanced with values, and with this sense of nurturing, and the thing about the nurturing in this channel is, is that it's not codependent in its highest expression. It's awakened expression. It's not codependent, but it does provide an understanding of how we mature. How do we grow up? How do we become responsible adults, right? And how are we accountable to the tribe? Because tribes make us accountable, right? People are watching. People are paying attention. It's a relatively small group of people. And this is, I'm sure, a lot of what happened when we were living in groups of 50 to 150 people, which is what most of our time as humanity has been, has been living in groups that size. And as I said earlier, you know, different indigenous people from the Americas, you know, have said 
they're like, how can, I'll just say white people because I'm white, right? How can white people, it's like they never grew up. It's like we're in this continual adolescence where we never grew into understanding that we have to have responsibility and accountability. Because otherwise, how could we be, you know, cutting down all of the forests and fracking and doing the things that we're doing? I completely agree with that. And that's a lot of that understanding is what my eight pillars of feminine sovereignty grew out of. And the book that I just turned in the first draft about is designed to be a a pathway that we can grow ourselves into the people who can face the big challenges that we have created largely as human beings and be able to develop strategies to help mitigate that and ideally come up with solutions. So I know a lot of people are hurting because of this this gun violence and these mass murders. I mean, we've had way too many of them in this country. I mean, where else in the world do you find people going in and just randomly shooting children? There's something really off about this. And clearly, I feel strongly about it. I'm writing, creating a video about it. I imagine that a lot of you feel strongly about it, have all kinds of different feelings. And that's good. It's good for us to have our feelings and not be numb to what's going on. And I invite you to go into your human design chart, go into your authority, go into your inner guidance and ask yourself, what is your role in helping to change what's happening here? You know, what is your part in this? I don't know what that is and I'm not here to tell you what it is, but I do believe that it's time that something really changes here. Part of that is responsibility and accountability. Part of it is not allowing young people who don't have the guidance and to be able to purchase weapons that they can kill a lot of people with in a very short period of time. (laughs) So I want to just say blessings on all of the people who've been killed and blessings on the communities. I know that the community, the African American community in Buffalo is, I mean, how could you not be completely distraught and angry and resentful and, and so I just feel it in my heart. I felt inspired to say this and to reaffirm that none of this lives in the human design chart. What lives is the awakened masculine, which is about protection and providing, and that we can do that in right relationship with the earth and with each other when we recognize that we are not actually separate and that it's our job to really take care of each other and to care for each other and to do the same with our planet. Okay, that's my video for today. Many blessings, much love. Bye for now.